Good morning and welcome to our 10 minute daily devotional. This is Jody. Um, hope everybody is doing great today on this Thursday. I know I missed yesterday. Um, as you might have heard from the day before, I'm at the beach with my family and there are 20 of us in this house and um, it is a bit crazy and yesterday was just too crazy. So I skipped yesterday, but I'm happy to be with you guys again today. Um, let me open us up in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day, God, and thank you that um, we can come to you no matter where we are and no matter what we're doing. And um, please help us to focus on you for the next few minutes and forget about everything else, but hear what you have to tell us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, we are having a really great time this week, and um, I'll be driving back tonight. So, um, you know, sad to go home, but uh, I've got to get my daughter to a church event. So everyone else will be staying till Saturday, but I'm heading home. So sad about that, but um, I'll be at home in my own house with no one there except the dog, which will be very crazy. Um, and you know, as a mom with three kids, kind of a nice little vacation in itself, so I'm not complaining at all. Um, what I thought we would do today is I found a little devotional by um, Anne Graham Lotz in crosswalk.com, and it's the daily devotion. It's called Joy of My Heart, and um, I thought it would be fun to do this one. And so um, it's called Joy of My Heart with Anne Graham Lotz. And the, it's entitled, um, Doing Things God's Way. So the verse that starts out is John 15, 5. So if you have your Bible, turn in your Bible to John 15, 5. And the verse, I'll just read it straight from, from here. But it says, He who abides in me, and I am him, bear much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. I'll read it again. He who abides in me, and I in him, bear, bears much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. What a great reminder this verse is that, um, you know, we need Jesus for everything. And when we have him, we bear fruit. And um, without him, we are nothing. And so a good reminder as we're going through our days and our good days and our struggle days that without him, we can do nothing. So um, let's stay close to him. That's our whole goal, right? Our whole goal of meeting together every day is let's get closer to Jesus. So let me read the the, the um the little blog here. After following Jesus' instructions to throw their nets on the other side of the boat, the disciples hauled in a huge catch of fish. Back on the beach, he invited them to come and have breakfast. With furtive glances and downcast faces, none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew. And on that early spring morning beside the sparkling sea, Jesus took the bread and fish from the fire and fed his disciples breakfast. They feasted and were satisfied, not only by the food he had provided, but also by the fish they had caught. And so this story is a really cool story. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll see if I can pull up some of the story in just a second. But basically, it's that the disciples weren't having any luck fishing. And, um... And then Jesus said, throw your nets on the other side. And they were hugely successful, such that the boats were so full, they could barely even get the boats the, um, the boats back to shore. So um, let me read a little bit more. Jesus was teaching them an important life lesson. They had been out in the boat, apparently trying to meet their own needs, doing what they were naturally good at, but basically living their lives without him. Which makes sense, right? Because um, they didn't know him yet. And they had come up empty, unfulfilled. But when he was in their lives and they obeyed his word and they served him in his way, not only were they successful, but they were also satisfied. And let me see real quickly if I click right here, if I can pull up this, um, oh, it's just pulling up the one verse. Let me just see if I can pull up all of John 21 here. Okay, let me, let me read a little bit of this story. This is called Jesus and the Miraculous Catch of Fish, and it's in John 21. I'm going to start at John 21, 1. Afterward, Jesus appeared to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel. I'm going to skip around a little bit and just read the names instead of where they're from. Um, 
uh, let's see, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, well, we'll go with you. So they went out and got in the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Now, think about this from the disciples' point of view. How silly is that? They're experts. They're someone on the shore who is not an expert is telling them, and I'm not even sure they know him. I don't know. Um, But he's telling them to throw their net. Maybe they didn't know who he was, but throw their net into the other side of the boat where they're sitting right there and they've got nothing all night and they're tired and they want to get in. And he says, throw your net on the other side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple with whom whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. So I'll stop there. That was um, verses one through eight. And um, just a lot of cool things right there that don't have anything to do with Anne's um, devotional, but I think it's fun to read um, the whole story and to talk a little bit about it. But how cool is it that Peter was so excited to see the Lord that he jumped in and swam to shore? And I knew they, they did say he wasn't that far, but still, that's pretty cool. Um, and just the fact that they listened to what he said and they did it. And after they did it, they said, it is the Lord. And, you know, I wonder what went through their minds. Did they know? Did they have a hint that it was the Lord before he told him to do it um, when he was just standing on shore? Could they tell it was him? And, you know, why did they follow the instructions? Um, just a lot of fun things that run through my mind that one day when we get to heaven, I'll, uh, I'd love to go up to Peter and ask him, tell me about this story and tell me more about you know, what was going through your mind. Won't that be fun? But anywho, um, let me back up to Anne's thing real quick um, because there were a few more things I wanted to read in this. Um, And then I don't, you know what? I think that this is written by her. I'm not actually sure it's part of the actual study, but it says, what are the secrets to a life of impact? Daniel achieved greatness in the eyes of his contemporaries in the eyes of history and most importantly in the eyes of God. His faith did not waver as he faced his critics, as he served new kings in power, or even as he confronted hungry lions. How can we achieve that kind of faith today? Daniel's choices can be ours, such as the choice to listen, the choice to forgive, and the choice to pray. Cultivate a life-changing faith when you learn to implement the Daniel key into your everyday life. And so, you know, I think that that's important too. Listening, forgiving, and praying. So anyways, I I don't think that that piece was actually part of the other study, but I think it's kind of cool to remember those three things as well. So with that, let's go back to our journal or go to our journal and let's write um, today, June 14th, um, 2018. And I think the thing that that we should remember today is um, without him, we can do nothing. Without God, I can do nothing. And so let's just write that down without God. I can do nothing. And I think that's an important truth to remember that with him, um, we will bear much fruit. Let's add that in. With him, we will bear much fruit. So as we go out our day today, let's just try and think about um, how can we abide in him more closely? What can we do just little things throughout the day? That's what he wants, right? Spending as much time as with him as we can, just little thankfulnesses throughout the day, but just thinking, um, are there any opportunities where we would go the other path and not follow God's will and um, and how can we, we follow his will? So little things throughout the day. So with that, um, let's write down our praise and our prayer request. I always like to think through our day or a previous day and think what is a praise that we have and what is a prayer request that we have for God. And I love to look back in our journals. So for those of you who are new, it's something that we do every day, write down our praise and our prayer request in our journal and, um, and we get to look back on it. It's super, super awesome. So let's do that. What's our praise and our prayer request?
All right, let me pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. God, thank you for these stories straight from the Bible that remind us of how to get closer to you and remind us to have faith in you and um, remind us that by abiding in you, we will be fruitful. And if we don't do that, we will have nothing. Please help us to remember that truth as we go throughout our day today and just think of specific examples in which we can follow that truth and get closer to you. We love you so much, God, and we just want to be as close to you as we can. And we want you to imprint on our hearts and minds ways that we can do that. It's different for everybody. And so um, little ways that throughout the day, we can just remember that you're with us and remember to stay close to you. We love you, Jesus. Thank you so much for everything. Amen. All right. Well, I hope you have a fantastic day and I cannot wait to see you tomorrow. Bye.